Greetings Google Academy UK and this is the final lesson, lesson 12, you're at the end, we're going to be offloading media and we've already seen how to offload media without a plugin, but like we say it has its limitations at the minute, being you can't add featured images, background images or WooCommerce images from a URL, you have to have them in your media library. So for the purpose of that, and we're going to be going through all this, we're going to be setting up first a bucket and the service account key. The bucket to keep the pictures, the service account key to grant access. <clears throat> so I require first is a new plugin. And um, we're going to be using Stateless for the purpose of this one. But there is also WP Offload Media, which I've had it used it before and worked, but then when I used it in conjunction with WP Mail SMTP caused the conflict. The media offloaded all perfectly worked on the site, but then the mailer plugin, post SMTP, stopped working. So I found this other combination where stateless, I've had no problems with it whatsoever. And well we'll do the bucket thing in a minute, but why I've got a subdomain, you don't worry about this page, just go straight to the stateless settings. Then we can see at minute disabled and you can enable this for elementary if you want to. But at the moment, I'm not going to bother about that because it's not to do with that. We're going to choose stateless. This means cash busting option, which is down here, and it adds a random number to your image look. And you have to have this one enabled when you are fully offloading it so you don't get the same name file in the bucket, which could be quite awkward. So, what we're going to have here is my bucket, I'm going to be calling compliance. Google Academy dot UK. Now, if you want to name your bucket after your subdomain, like I've done here, then what you have to have is in Google Search Console. There we go. You have to have had it verified in here, which we did in one of the earlier lessons. And that's it. Just you should just let me in here without that welcome bit. I think this will get me through. Yeah, so as we can see here at the minute, I have it verified. As you see, there's not a lot going on, but it's verified. Now, if you try to name your bucket with dots in it, it's going to say it must be verified. So if you're not wanting to do a load balancer and all this sort of thing, you just want to upload it, call your bucket what you want to call it. And we'll go in and create the bucket now. We do that in storage. I've already got one running for Google Academy. So we'll create a totally new one for this. So we're going to choose create bucket. Then we'll have the naming come up. Let's have a look at the name. Let's copy that. There's no point typing that out again. Alright, let's see. A bucket name can only use dots. Can't contain Google. This is where it's had me before, you know. Yeah, so in this one, I'm not going to be setting up that. I'll have to do this one in. Shall I have a tiffy dot space? Right, I'm going to jump over into another website, actually, where I won't have this problem. I'll pause for a moment, and then I'll explain what I'm doing. Rather than going off in tangents and confusing the matters, what I'll do, I'll just stick with, for this is the first out of, well, it's the second out of four methods, to be fair. So in this one, we're going to create a bucket. I'm going to call this one. Compliance G Academy, and you can't like so you can't use full stops or capital letters. You can use, use full stops and domain names. We can see there's no warnings or anything there except don't include any sensitive information. Where we're going to put it, we'll leave it multi-region. That don't really matter. Then choose the default storage class for your data. Actually, you know what? I think this is where I might be, no, because it is in US, multi-region, ice available across largest area, region. No, we're all right with that. Keep it as standard, and then access control the same, advanced settings, fine. Right, so now create. And so now if we copy that, go back into stateless, and pasting where it's actually called. We can now see we've got a bucket. <clears throat> There's no images or anything in it. So the next thing we need to do is go to Appian Services Credentials. Then we're going to create a service account key. There you go. 
and then service account name again if you're going to be using subdomains and things and different sites in here always give it a good name compliance service will do and then service account description I don't need that and then we're going to create some credentials select a role this did get because it's slightly changed so what you're looking for is cloud store where are you going so I should go a bit quicker really cloud storage there and then storage admin that's the role you need otherwise again it will not work continue and then we're going to want to create a key is it now we leave bad as it is click done then create a key where it'll come up somewhere and where we've gone all right service count compliance service got that edit add key create new key we want a JSON create so that'll download any second so there we go right copy this I'm gonna rekey mine obviously because I don't want anyone having my key so keep these safe put this here now if you want to have a folder within your bucket all you would do is here we'd go back to right save that first make sure it takes effect like I say I'm gonna come back and rekey in a moment but we'll just go through this come on save maybe that's all done there right so now back to the bucket storage browser let me see we've got compliance g academy so what we want to do now like so you can create a different folder in here if you want to keep it in but bear in mind you can only have the one folder so it's not like you could have um, uh, star items then contact us picture or whatever Right, so that's that done. This is where we'd put the domain in once we get the subdomain. I'm going to do this for lesson three, but I'm going to be doing it in a domain called tiffy.space and then Google won't stop me. Right, so that's that done. Save changes. Um, hopefully, it's really patient. Yeah, we don't worry about that. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to go and add a new image and see if it goes into one, the bucket, and two, the domain changes <coughs> the URL for the pitch changes that'll do hello world one we want to see an image appear here if we don't that's bad there we go we've seen an image so edit that we can see a look it's now all taken embedded in yep so if we go here oops sorry bucket refresh <clears throat> we should now get a folder strip to 2020 and then 06 and then as image, I'm presuming. Yep, 2020. That's predicted 06. So now we can see WordPress has put this many images up. Now if we're only going to be using like one or two, we look for what size, like we need the thumbnail and maybe just the medium one because we're not going to use it on a stretch image or anything like that. So then what you can do is get rid of the unnecessary images that WordPress creates for you and that's about it for this lesson so we've created a bucket we named it we put it in a location then we went off and we created a JSON we downloaded that and then as soon as the video finishes Nick is going to go and rechange that and rekey it so you can't all start using my bucket and costing me no money but there you go so as always any questions or comments please feel free to leave them any feedback i'll answer questions as soon as possible as always stay safe regards from ramsgate united kingdom